Anyhow, now we're on it, let's do a little bit of actual electrical content. So my backstory is I was a Sparky, I was an apprentice, then I was a Sparky, then pretty early on I set up on my own. And I was on my own for about 20 years before I actually went and worked for someone, which is what you probably know from recently when you've seen me doing videos on air. I started doing Instagram when I was working for someone, uh, working for people. Anyhow, for years and years and years, I've kept the workshop that was across the road and you've seen stories of me moving this workshop over here. And when I had my own business for 20 years, you acquire a lot of shit. And that was all chucked in a workshop across the way, just lobbed in there as a store. Now I'm trying to get it all back in here as a usable, usable, look at the state of it, as a usable workshop. But I've been finding a couple of bits and bobs um, that might be of interest. So I'm going to get some little videos out of them. They might not be fucking super interesting to anyone, but there's some little niche bits here. The one I'm going to show you now, I think it might be a lost skill. And the one I'm trying to show you tomorrow, or I'm going to show you at some point, I'll set it up on the desktop. There's a load of stuff there for moving things because moving things as an industrial spark is quite an art form that I'm fucking pretty good at, I need to say, but I found something over there I'm going to show you. So if you're an industrial spark, you know you do a lot of unistrut and you do a lot of rod. Yeah, it's just par for the course. It's fucking, it's what you do, yeah? Hanging unistrut and rod on things like that. And then when you started, when I, when I started, you would need a box spanner because you might have a, a unistrut here and then the next unistrut might be up here and you might have to thread a nut on it so you'd be like that, piddling around the rod with your fingers fucking around. So one of the best tools you can get for Unistrut is a box spanner, and I'll show you why. Unistrut, deep, 41x41, 41 41, like this, an M10 equipment, rods, nuts, bolts, go together like fucking salt and vinegar on chips, yeah, in the industrial world. And you'll always be dealing with that. A lot of people use 8 mil, but I tend to find 8 mils the threading of the tramps. Don't. Do it. If you use 8mm, you use 8mm. You're a fucking weakling. You also use 6 for fitting tray, but this is a 17mm socket. So you can imagine you've got a 10mm nut in there and you want to tighten it up, look. The trick with most 17mm sockets is this. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit in Unistrut. So how do you do up a... How do you do a, a bolt up that's in there? How do you do that? Well, first of all, let's get this out of the way, yeah? I know you can get sockets for it. But when you're a poor apprentice... Getting those ground down sockets off Unistraw. Do you know they're about £65 each now? And you need a shallow one and a tall one. And often, sometimes, they just won't work. So you need something that will go in there and tighten up a bolt. And the solution to that is a box spanner. So you know what you're going to need? You're going to need a box spanner like this lot. This is a box spanner and it takes a 10mm bolt. So if I then get that box spanner lock, if I get this bit of Unistraw and try and show it lock, if I kick it off the table... Come back to you. So my box spanner lock will fit in and it will go on my nut and I can tighten my nut. There you go. All you need is a box spanner. Now, now what you're probably thinking here and now is, is who the fuck is this dickhead telling me that a box spanner exists? But this box spanner has a little secret. This box spanner, which is a 17 box spanner, is actually super duper long. And that's because... This box spanner, which has the box end on it and everything, look, it's a proper box spanner, but it's super long. You can make these as long as you want because this is a piece of 20 millimeter conduit. Be amazed then. When I made this, I was in my early 20s, maybe even my teens. I know where I made it because I know where the orange tape from. So yes, the box spanner I made, I was in my 20s definitely. So it's got a proper end lock, it's a 10 mil box spanner. It's a bit manked up, it's not like a high torque application, but if you're threading a rod, I'll show you. If to get some, you, if you've got to get a rod up a bit, if you've got to get a nut, should I say, up a bit of rod, and it's four meters, you can make a four meter long one of these. And what you can do is, you can stick it on a drill, and you can run the nut up slowly without you picking your fingers off. But what you're guessing is, is how do you make that? Well, I'll tell you. So these can be made out of four points, three points, seven might five meter length of conduit, and I've done that, because we thread nuts that far. And uh, this is about a nice little size. I've also got a short one that fits in my toolbox. And it's a little bit shorter than it was because you can make these short. But let me, let me tell you how you make it. So I guess that's what you want to know. So what you do is you work out the length you want your thing to be, your, your nuts bit to be, and you cut a bit of conduit that's about six inches longer because you're going to waste some of it. Then you go and find yourself a 10 mil nut bolt. Fucking hell. You actually get a few of these. And what you do is you see the top of it. You see how it's, it's very defined at the top here. You see that little chamfer that's on it, where it just bends down a bit? You see it curls off there. You take all that chamfer off with a grinder. So the bottom of it stays as a hexagon, but the top of it becomes a pointy dome. And then you get this your bit of conduit, 
and you place it in the end of the conduit and you hit it with a hammer and you hit it and hit it and hit it until it goes in. Don't worry if you mess it up or mank it up, it doesn't matter. And you hit it and hit it and hit it till it goes in and sits flush like that. When you've done that, you cut the end off just so you've got a little bit of hexagon left. Then you do it again. So you basically cold forge it in. Then when you're done, when you've got it how you want it, you put it on a bit of steel like that and you know the flats, there's a flat on the top here, look, and a flat on the bottom. And you tap it lightly with the hammer to make the hexagon good. Then you cut the end off until you get a good hex and you keep fanning around knocking that in to get a good hex. It takes about 10 minutes. And then you take this, you heat it up with a blowtorch and you quench it in water or oil and it'll go hard. And it will stay like that for most of its life. Like I say, it's not for a high torque application, but it works. Then when you wish, when it's knackered, you'll still have a little bit of hexagon here. Focus your fuck. So what you do is, just as it's starting to go mad, you keep your nut, or just get a normal nut, you put it in there, yeah, see how that's flush? You bang it in half a thread, half a head, and then you sliver the end off again with a bandsaw or a, a, a thingy saw, then you reheat it and heat it again. So that's how you can make your own box spanner in 10 mil to any length. So you're gonna have 10 mil kicking around site where you've got metal conduit, you're gonna have metal conduit kicking around where you've got 10 mil. I know some people are thinking, I'll just go and buy a box spanner. You can't go and buy a fucking four metre long box spanner, mate. So it might take you half an hour to make it. And somewhere in this workshop, the tools, I've got three sets of these in dies for making those. And uh, I know my apprentice as well, my old apprentice. So yeah, um, sounds stupid. Maybe you're thinking it's a load of time, but you put the drill on the end of that, you can whiz a nut up super quick and get into Unistrut and then tighten it up and whatnot. So yeah, that's how you make a box spanner on my first job. With Harry Power and the Bastard, he'd go, you're doing Unistrut, you better go and make yourself a box spanner. You'd have to knock one of them up. So yeah, little tip that I think's dying out. All your Milwaukee tools and fucking wear and stuff and flash tools in the world, go to one of them brands. They're not going to sell you a four metre box spanner. And if someone sends me one now, I'll knock you out. Cheers. And then stay tuned. So hopefully when I find, I've got a couple more things to find that are part of this collection. And I'll show you how you can move anything of any size, anywhere, with about three people and some of this tackle. But that's that's for tomorrow anyway. Go and do some work now. Stop watching my videos, you fucking lazy. C town's got a lovely little local bookshop you can see in there are all the books and that you can get a wildflower garden a hundred days in photographs the trouble at the autobiography a book about penguins oh and a copy of mein kampf <laughs> what the fuck <laughs>